Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony North Easton and to part two of building this bridge transport train or maintenance train. Um, I've had a really great response to the last video. Um, the feedback and support has been brilliant. Um, one message in particular from Lindsay360 um, came up with an idea of if these were uncoupled from the train and they were standing on the track alone what, stop, what would stop them from running away? Well, nothing. So what I'm planning to do is to add a brake handle into each one of these wagons so if the engine did uncouple for any reason and the crane had to back onto it from this direction all this would be locked in place and would not move so the idea is is to put a brake handle roughly about there on each one of these supporting wagons um, and that's what we're going to do next and I think that would then finish them off and they'll be ready for painting so let's go and have a look in my come and handy box and work out how I'm going to do this so here we are back at the bench and we've got our four load bearing wagons and um, I've had a look in my come and handy box and I can't find anything um, that's I can use for a brake um, handle um, when you look in a brake van they're normally big round um, like a spoked um, wheel and the only thing I can come up with is I've looked in my fixings box and I've got some two mil screws here with some 3mm plain washers and some 3mm um, serrated washers so I think I've got an idea now so I've done one um, if you measure the height of it it's roughly 13mm off of the wagon um, kind of looks all right I mean I think I can live with that and if you put a figure on there it looks about the right height so I've drilled the hole 28 millimeters from the rail and then in the center of these toolboxes and then just twist the screw into the hole to make the thread. The drill bit I'm using is 1.5. And I'll just screw that in, just making sure that it's upright in both planes, that plane and that plane. So it's square to the body. I don't want a leaning handle. So I'm just screwing it in just so it creates a thread and then I can adjust the height when I come to super glue this screw in. I dip the screw into a little bit of super glue on this piece of card here and then just screw that in. Make sure it goes in square to the wagon and then set it to the right height before the super glue goes off ten millimeters it looks good that way it looks good that way maybe just a little bit that way so with the serrated washer and the flat washer the best thing to do with these before you super glue them together is to crush them because Otherwise, you won't have 
much gluing surface for the super glue to take. So if you crush them together in a pair of pliers, then you can um, flatten out the serrated edges on the locking washer. Right, so them two are ready to super glue together. We've glued the serrated washer to the plain washer. Um, we can now glue it onto the main screw. Now how I did it was uh, using two toothpicks. One toothpick to steady the flat washer. And the other toothpick was to put the glue onto the plain washer. And then drop in the serrated washer on top making sure they're flush all the way around. So now we can glue this onto the wagon. Using the flat side of the washer to glue onto the screw because it's got more surface area. And just making sure it's in the middle. You've got a little bit of handling time, but not much, because it does go off pretty quick. It's about getting these washers in the middle of the screw. Yeah, happy with that. That's all I can do with the wagons for the moment. Um, I have got some buffers on order for this end, so I'm going to put a couple of buffers this side. But uh, apart from that, that's all I can do with uh, these load-bearing wagons. So the next thing we want to move on to is the bridge girders. Now, we can't just have it glued onto a bracket like that so what I want to do is put some braces four on each end to this side to this side and the same this end at right angles so it looks like this is fixed to this bracket here I've made up this drawing here to tie in the girder plates in with the bracket and uh, as you can see, I'm in the process of cutting them out. Um, so what I'm doing is, where the 5mm line is, I'm just trimming off a millimetre. So it goes over this ledge here. And then, once it goes over the ledge, I can then measure up the 13 millimetres and then the 4 millimetres and then cut it across diagonally and if you've noticed I've drilled a little tiny hole in there that's so they can be lifted on and off because I can imagine these being quite heavy um, for this guy to pick up on his own but maybe two mine could probably lift it so I'm cutting out that little V piece the one mil piece and I just put a little chamfer on it and what I do then is this is the template one so I don't have to mark them out each time it's making sure that they flush with the bottom and the sides and then just mark that angle with a pencil and then um, trim it off to size just making sure the bottom's flush and that it's flush and then just mark it with a pencil and then cut that piece off then we have our brackets and then I just pop the hole in that little corner there and this is what the brackets look like when they're finished and uh, what will happen is they'll get glued in like that.
so it looks like they're bolted to this rib here and also bolted to this um, bracket here if I turn it around you can see I've already glued one in place so there'll be two either side and uh, I've got to make 16 of these now that the brackets have been glued on it looks like it's been engineered for purpose so we have these brackets now stabilizing these girder plates so the next thing I want to concentrate on is some lifting eyes so the crane can lift these girder plates up off of their mounts um, when they come to install the bridge so now we're going to make some D shackles um, using my favorite material copper wire um, this is 0 0.6 thick um, which is ideal for bending up these shapes um, as you can see by the drawing we're four millimeters high 1.5 millimeters internal diameter and then what we do then we just bend the copper wire back on itself and then we snip it this little piece off uh, so I'll show you that in a minute so the idea is these D shackles will go on the strengthening beams here and here so one there and one there uh, on both sides so let's concentrate on making these D shackles so what I'm going to do is first of all is measure it up four millimeters from the edge A mark on there and then what I'll do is that pencil mark that's on the copper wire I'm going to wrap it around a 1.5 millimeter drill bit so that's how you get to your 1.5 on the inside diameter so it's just a case of pushing that around like so you end up with something like that so just make sure it's parallel before we bend it back at 90 degrees so I'm just checking make sure that's parallel right then you get a set of long nose pliers now I know that the uh, this top edge here is four millimeters so we place that right on the edge and into the return of the curve there and then we'll just push that at 90 degrees and that forms the D on this shackle now as for rating of these shackles it's worth safe work and load I'm not sure <laughs> um, and then it's just a case of just trimming off the long piece and then we should end up with D I guess because of the size of these shackles they've got to be uh, 20 tons, 50 tons probably you should end up with something like that I am now starting to fit the D shackles to the girder plate bridge um, what I'm doing is I'm coming down I don't know if you look, if we look on this one you can see there's two bolts one two so I'm picking out a second bolt and, uh, and I'm going in at this angle but trying to get right into the corner of that web on both sides and hopefully the hole will meet in the middle like we have here so we do try not to destroy this um, this um, steel work if we can help it so what we're going to do is the second bolt down going in at this angle which is roughly about 45 degrees and you can just about see it coming through the other side when that starts to happen we stop and then we swap the drill around to the other side 
Yeah, it's just starting to come through now. So now we start on this side. You can just see the white there and then the plastic, and that's where it's starting to come through. And then we just do the same this side. And then we can open up the D shackle, put it through the hole, and then squeeze the copper wire back in place. As you can see I'm going right in at a really slight angle there. So I should be through the other side now. Yeah, you can see the drill bit now. So that's ready for the D shackle. So as you can see, we can open up the D shackle just to have a little bit of a gap there, roughly about a millimetre and a half, because you don't need much. And this then will just hopefully go into the hole that we've already pre-drilled. Now this bit can be a bit fiddly. And once it's in the hole, we can now gently, gently push a piece of copper back in place. And then here we have it. The shackle is in place. Just one last thing before we move on to the steel work. Um, just be aware when drilling these holes for the shackles. Um, as you notice there, I nearly came through because I was a little bit heavy handed. So just beware to take your time, get the angle right and you won't have this. I think I'll be alright there, I think the paint will hide that, hide that little blemish. It's just uh, I nearly came through from this side. So just be aware when drilling out these holes for your D shackles. Right, steel work. Um, I've come up with a basic plan for the steel work as you can see on this uh, drawing. The girder plates would hang on the side of the steel work like so. So there'll be a, a series of holes along there where these would get bolted onto. And um, I know I haven't got a full complement of steel here to build a proper bridge so this is just a representation um, of what a bridge may look like. I mean when, when you go underneath a bridge if you look up you see three main beams like this and you see lots of little ones but uh, this this will do just for a representation of a bridge. So the next thing I want to do is to look at tying these in as if they were going to be assembled on site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut back the ends of all these. It may take a while to do just so that it sits inside the web of this I-beam. So now we're going to work on the beams um, these are a couple I've done earlier. As you can see, I have taken the flanges off both ends and drilled a couple of holes in. So that's ready to bolt up into the I-beam this way. As you can see, the profile matches the I-beam. So, how do I do it? What I do first of all is put a little nick into the ends of each beam like so then we flip it on edge and basically it's roughly about two and a half millimeters it's about there just backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and eventually it will just ping off you have to be very careful as you come through because you don't want to touch the 
cuss it as it as it were. Hopefully that should just ping off soon. Not quite there. Just go through there again. There. there she goes. That's one. About the same on the other side. 2.5 mil. About that. Now, if you were going to make one of these for real, obviously you'd measure it a bit more than what I'm doing, I'm just doing it by eye at the moment. But you could make an underside um, steel work, no problem. The next thing is just, just a 0 0.8 drill bit and just pop in a couple of holes. So with the main support beams, I've all I've done is just drilled a series of holes and uh, what will happen there is in theory is when you bolt this channel into that channel there will be brackets which will tie them in uh, well, I'm not going to break make the brackets the brackets will probably be um, put in boxes and um, shipped that way and arrived on site to assemble on site um, rather than making the brackets and fixing them now. So that's that's the theory behind the, the building of the Bridgeworks um, steel. So the next piece of the jigsaw puzzle, the final piece before we start painting, is what I've done here is I've cut some coffee stirring sticks in half and these are going to be the load bearers between the channels on the bolster wagons. So once the channel starts loading up onto the um, bolster wagons, in between channel and channel there would have been some timbers. So that's what I'm going to do next. And here's one I have painted earlier. And I'm using some um, Humbrol enamel paint. And all I'm doing is I'm wiping it on and I'm wiping it off as quick as I can. It's matte 98 I'm using. And uh, I'm wiping it on and just taking it off as quick as you can. And it gives this old wooden look. So as you can see, it's, it's a lovely day outside. So I thought I'd do the painting of these steelworks outside in the, in the sun. Well, in the shade. So the paint I'm using is just a 46500 light grey expo paint. Just going to give me the the base colour, if you like, um, so I don't have to put too many coats on. Okay, boy, here you go. Right, so I shall continue with these. Uh, we'll see you in a bit. Right, so that didn't take long, and um, looking at it, I think I uh, might stick with the colour of that uh, very light grey. But I'll paint the brackets and the shackles a different colour, just to highlight that they're not part of the bridge. So now we're going to start loading up the bolster wagons with the steel work because I'm quite happy with the colour so I'm going to leave it as it is. So a little tiny drop of super glue across there and across that beam there. You don't need much. And then just drop the steel work in, making sure it's parallel and flush with the one that's in there and then we add the load bearing sticks what we cut up earlier one there and then one there as you can see I've made a start on fitting the chains and to be honest it's been a bit of a headache um, what I've done I have cut some really tiny hooks 
um, shaped like camping pin pegs and basically if you put it through the chain and then into these eyelets on the side of the wagon here now the thing is you've got to drill through the eyelets in order to get these little tiny hooks through and then you just super glue them in place and you end up with something like this and uh, it looks like quite a realistic load and this is the long beams as you can see they're just the same length as the bolster wagon just come over the top a little bit here here's the buffer and it's just more or less in line with the buffer and uh, it just about fits in there so we've got a little bit of chain and we lie it across the bolster wagon and its load now we've got the tricky part now of getting the hook into the chain and then into that um, eyelet so the thing to do there is to drill the eyelet out so I'm using a 0.8 drill bit now the reason I'm doing this is to make sure the pin goes in they should be pre-drilled all the way through to start with but they're not so the next thing is grab one of these little tiny hooks which are 4mm by 5mm and with a return on the top as you can see and you sort of try and get it through the link of a chain and then into into that hole and try and keep it there until you get the super glue on so I'm going to hold that with a finger and then just try and pull the chain across and tighten the chain a little bit hopefully that stays there and it has so the next thing to do is I've been dropping a little bit of super glue here and a little bit of super glue there and that keeps the chain reasonably tight so I'm just going to drop a little bit of super glue in each of those starting with this wood first so you won't hardly you won't see it when it uh, goes off it won't leave a shadow there on the wood it might do if you drop any on the beams and the next little droplet is to drop into that hole there right and let that go off and then we flip it around and we do the same here and it should already have gone off on the wood so you can tug the chain a little bit if you need to And you repeat the whole process over again. That's that side done. And with the chains being added, that virtually completes um, the loading of these bolster wagons. Um, there's only one thing left to do on these, and that's just to paint the copper wire used to clamp these chains down. This is the chain that I'm using. It's 2mm by 1.5. It's just jewellery fashion chain and you can pick it up quite easily on eBay. 
There's one final detail I want to add to these load bearing chassis and that's some buffers. So what I'm doing here is marking out four millimeters from each end of the buffer beam to put some buffers in. So the reason why I'm doing this is if the bridge girder plates are off of these loading wagons they would have to be coupled together as a pair and um, they would need buffers to stop them clashing into these eyelets which hold the drawbar so um, I have ordered some buffers and they've turned up today and here are the actual buffers and um, I've measured the pin on the buffers uh, as you can see just underneath the buffer plate it's actually 1.9 so I'm going to open up the holes now to 2 mil. I've already pre-drilled the holes roughly uh, using a um, drill bit of 0 0.6 so I'm just opening up the holes now um, just using this handy hand tool. It looks like a massive hole, but hopefully it's just big enough for the buffer. So now that the drilling's done, I'm just uh, deburring the holes, just making sure that when the buffers go on, they sit nice and flat against the buffer beam. And as you can see, I've already cut them off of the strip and uh, they fit snugly in there. So I'm just using the Revel contactor, the polyurethane glue, um, just to glue these in. A little bit on that one as well. Just leave them to fuse together. So now that the final detail has been added, it's just a case of cleaning these up, ready for painting. So I'm just dipping cotton bud into just some ordinary plain thinners, um, and then taking as much off of the cotton bud just by rolling it on a bit of towel, and then just giving them clean over just making sure there's no grime or dirt I don't know how old these tender chassis are probably go back to the 50s probably 60s don't know but Oscar Paisley if you ever need to look at the old triangle stuff you go go along to his channel. Um, he's got all this um, old Hornby Triangle stuff. Little shout out there. Yeah, so it's just a case of giving these a good clean. Now I've started to paint the chassis, and uh, this will make them all look identical. Um, Hopefully, when it all comes together, they'll look uh, uniformed. So the plastic card look is going. So what I've decided to do is leave the buffer beams red. So I'm going to leave them red. And I've painted the brake handle on all of them in the same red. And also, what I'm going to do now with the girder brackets, I'm going to paint them red as well. Just these bits, just the, just the supporting plates. So we know that that is not part of this construction when it goes to site. 
So as you can see now, I'm starting to paint the D shackles as well in red, and I'm having to support them with a toothpick, and then just gently apply the paint. And hopefully, when it swivels down, it does not touch the girder plate. Otherwise, I'll have some red paint on there. Just let it rest. I might just hold it for a little bit. Okay, I'll just leave it like that. So we're we're moving on a little bit now, and uh, as you can see, I'm applying some grey to the bodywork of these vehicles. Um, it's semi matte. 378 it's a homebrew paint and basically it's just changing the look and the appearance of these loading wagons or load wagons or load bearing wagons um, as you can see I've done that side There was a fair bit more to do yet. Right, so that's the paintwork finished. And I must admit, they do look quite good. They look like a load-bearing vehicle now, especially with the buffers on the back here. Um, yeah, as you can see, I've painted the handrails white on there. And I've just touched these foot plates. Um, with a little bit of white paint as well so that's them finished um, one last thing to do is to add some chain into this tray and the other one I'll put the drawbar in and the D shackles and uh, that's it we're almost ready to run these on the railway right so now we're just about to assemble it um, as you can see, I've used a 3mm um, screw. Uh, you can use any screw. You could use a, uh, a, a hex head screw, but I've decided to use a dome head screw. And uh, what I've done is, before I placed the plate on there, I've just smeared a very fraction bit of oil between the bracket and the bed of this, because after all, it is going to be a moving part so you want that to move with ease but only a very slim drop of oil and underneath we have a nylon 3 mil nylon locking nut so it's just a case of just nipping that nut up but you don't want to be too tight because you still want the bracket on the bed to move so it's just enough to hold it in place. As long as it moves freely, then that'll be ideal. So, like I said, just a little dollop of oil around that hole there. And then we can just drop this screw into there. And then we put the nut and washer on. And at last it's finished. Um, as you can see in the tool tray there, you can see a couple of spare D shackles and the draw bar that was made in the first video. Uh, I have touched up the screws with a little bit of uh, black mat so it can uh, blend in a little bit. And uh, they don't look too bad. You got matey boy there just checking it all over and wondering, bloody hell, I ain't seen one of these before. And this wagon's got the chain in, so you got one wagon with a chain in, and 
you have a wagon with the draw bar and D shackles. There's the chain in that one. Right, so now that the engineer's done his checks, uh, I think we should couple it up and run it round the layout. What do you think? Yeah, get on with it, mate, get on with it. Okay.
Well, uh, what can I say? <laughs> I really am surprised that the 9F managed to pull all that lot up Stevenson's bank. Right, so here we are. We've come to the end of the video, or the end of the line. And um, it's been an interesting project, and it's nice to do something mechanical for a change rather than um, building buildings. And it works. And it looks for the part. And it looks like you could do the job of transporting a bridge complete with. Steelwork. Yeah, you you could have waited till I got off the train. Well, you said I had to get a move on. Cause no pleasing some people. Right, so I think that's all from me this week. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed your, what you've seen, and uh, I know a few of you would, are going to try and attempt to make this bridge transporter so if you do let me know and uh, like to see some photos right moustache now oh before we go while we're up here South Shield Station this is a war I'm going to continue next week But that's next week's video. Bye for now. Bye.